What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to take a look at collages. Alright everyone, uh, as you might know I have a video uh, from quite a while ago and it's kind of blowing up and it's about collages but a lot of people commented that uh, it wasn't really easy to follow that video if you were like a beginner. So I thought in today's video let's do another collage video but let's make this a little bit more accessible for the beginners out there. So that's what we're going to do today. In this video you're going to learn a little bit of everything and that includes composition, cutting stuff out in Photoshop as well as a little bit of texturing. Alright, so before we actually proceed with the video just know that you can get the project file for this tutorial and all of the other PSD files, After Effects files and Illustrator files on my Patreon. If you want to learn more there's a link down in the description or stick around until the end of the video. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is find our subjects or find our photos that we're going to use to take a collage with. And this can be kind of a hard task, especially when you're just starting out with these types of artworks. What I usually do is I go to unsplash.com, which is a free stock photo website, and I see if I can find a couple of photos to start out with. And the main thing you want to search for is see if you can find a connection between a couple of photos. In my case, if we look at the screen here, I find this girl uh, and she was like kind of like standing up straight. And then I saw this picture of a volcano and I thought let's make it fun and see if I can make it look like she emerges from the volcano. Of course it's a little bit hard to find those specific things on Unsplash but yeah they have a ton of photos and all the pictures are done by uh, separate photographers so there's really a lot of character in all of these pictures. So what I suggest is see if you can find an easy way to start out. Uh, for me an easy way was for example see if you can layer a couple of mountain ranges over each other. A company that with a separate background, maybe like a super nice sky or with a lot of clouds or stars perhaps. Or in my case see if you can find like another planet or a sun uh, to put in the background. These usually work well together and they give off this retro futuristic vibe and I really like that. Feel free to start experimenting yourself and see what you can come up with. If you're looking for inspiration, I highly suggest following Smoking Gerp on Instagram as well as Mr. Cotton Stick. Smoking Gerp is a Dutch artist who has been doing collage work for a couple of years now and yeah, he never fails to amaze me with his works. As well as Mr. Cotton Stick and he does a lot of cool like collage reels. So yeah, if you want to find some inspiration, I would highly suggest checking out these two accounts on Instagram. I'll put a link in the description. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is make a new document, bring in these same pictures and I'm going to show you an easy way to cut out all these things in Photoshop. Alright, let's start out with the easiest and quickest method. Basically, Photoshop has an AI that helps you like determine what the subject or object in a photo is to help you cut it out easier. So the one thing you have to do is go to Select, Subject, and in this case we already have a selection of our like marble or planet. I'm not sure what it really is. is. Um, so what the next thing you want to do is make a mask out of this and if you want to learn more about masks I have a whole separate video on it because you can do a lot of things with it uh, for now you only need to know that you can make a mask out of your selection by clicking this button in the layer menu and as you can see there is now a mask connected to this layer which basically means everywhere where it's painted white the picture will be visible and everywhere where it's painted dark the picture will be invisible we can double check this by holding Alt or Option on the keyboard while clicking on the thumbnail of the mask in the layer menu here. So you can see this is basically the mask here and this is the result of the mask. Alright, so I'm going to make this layer invisible and we're going to try that one more time with the mountain range here. So we're going to go to Select, Subject and basically as you can see in this case it doesn't really work perfectly. So if we click on the mask button now you only have the top here and if you go to the mask view you can see this is basically the selection that Photoshop AI made and that's not really what we want, right? So I'm going to right click and click on delete layer mask and I'm going to see if we can try this again. So the next thing I'm going to do is basically click on select sky. And as you can see this basically made a perfect selection of the sky in this picture. But you're probably going to guess uh, we basically need the opposite part of our uh, photo here because now if we're going to mask this we basically make a selection out of the sky instead of the mountain range. So let's just hold Alt or Option once again and click on the thumbnail to go into mask view. And this is basically what the selection here is. So what you really want to do is invert the selection. Basically make all of the parts where it's white, you want to make it black. And all of the parts where it's black, you want to make it white. And there's an easy way to do this by pressing Control or Command I on your keyboard. And if we go out of the mask view again, you can see that we now have a selection. But you probably noticed something else here and that's if we go into mask view you can kind of see these like uh, shadows in the mountain range and we obviously want to still have those visible. So what we're going to do is go to image, 
adjustments, levels. So basically we're gonna slide these arrows together, increasing the contrast a little bit, making the gray parts either white or black. And if we go out of our mask here now, everything should be fixed a little bit. Let's go to the volcano. So here we're gonna do a different method and this one gives you a little bit more freedom in what you wanna select. So again, we're gonna go to the select menu at the top, but this time we're gonna click on select and mask. And basically we can now paint whatever uh, we want in our selection. So let's just start by painting in a volcano here. And you know what, I'm gonna go and select the rest of this image at the bottom as well. Um, but there's actually a part of the mountain that I don't really want to select. So what I'm going to do is hold Alt or Option on my keyboard. And as you can see, the icon of my brush starts changing from a plus into a minus. And if we paint over this, I can actually remove the background here. All right, so uh, there's one more part that I'm really not 100% uh, satisfied with. And if we go to the right here and we'll click on View, and I'm going to click on, let's say, on black. Or on white basically you can change the view of what you want to what you're are you going to see this uh, and if i up the opacity now you can kind of see what your image will look like if it would be on a white background and as you can see the splashing of the lava isn't really like there yet so let's select a little bit more of that but as we do that as you can see the background will also get selected and there's actually a nice uh, tool to help you fix that and it's called the refine edge tool if you look at the left here, this is basically the selection brush that we have here. I'm going to change it to the refine edge brush tool. So basically you can use this to cut out like small details like hair or in this case splashes. So if you paint over this, as you can see, the lava splashes will still be selected while still removing the background here. So again, we'll make a selection and now we have a transparent volcano. Okay, we're going to go one step further and we're going to cut out this model here. Um, and I actually already tested it and we run into a couple of errors. So uh, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing that we did before. So I'm going to go with select that mask. I'm going to select her. All right, so you might not see immediately what's going wrong here, but let me just go to the on black version. And as you can see, there are a little bit of a, a couple of bumps in her arms here. Um, and I think that's mainly also because this photo is a little bit noisy already. And we have the same problem here with her other arm. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it at this selection. Actually gonna remove this weird little line here. And you can also see that the details of our t-shirt aren't uh, doing well as well. So I'm just gonna go click okay. And basically what we're gonna do now is trace over this a little bit with the pen tool. So if you don't know about the pen tool, let's just grab that real quick by pressing P on our keyboard. And this basically works the same as the pen tool in Illustrator if you've used that. Basically we're gonna go click here. I'm gonna drag out a line here. And we're gonna drag out another line here. And basically by moving these handles, as you call them, uh, you can create a path around a subject. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna disable the mask for a while so we can see the whole picture by right clicking and click on disable mask. If you wanna do this quicker, you can also hold shift while clicking on this. And basically I'm gonna draw a path around uh, her with my uh, pen tool. So uh, now we're at the corner here and if we wanna put another point in, you can see that the line basically isn't doing what we, exactly what we want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm holding Alt on my keyboard or Option if you're on a Mac. And as you can see, the tool changes. And basically this makes me be able to move one of the handles towards the right direction so that we can actually make a sharp corner here. So we're gonna do it once more by holding Alt or Option on our keyboard. And if you fail to do like the correct point of your, or you put it too far or too early, you can just click on Control Command Z and redo it, just like I'm doing right now. And I'm gonna make my mask visible again to see where the arrows kind of stop, and they kind of stop around her hand. 
So So now that we're at the hand, uh, almost where uh, the selection starts being normal again, uh, what I'm going to do is actually going to draw a line like this. So we don't need to do the full selection around our hand as well, because that takes a lot of time. Uh, and I'm just going to go back here and go along the rest of our arm because there was another error here. And we're going to do the same here. So I'm just going to go continue like this around our arm. And if we are satisfied with selection, let's just go and close this real quick. So now we have a work path. And basically what we're going to do is make a selection by clicking right click click on make selection and we're going to go into our mask so make sure in the layer menu that your mask is selected and basically we're going to paint in with white everywhere that uh, the stuff is still uh, needs to be visible so in our case the shoulder here as well as down here a little bit uh, and now we basically want to remove those other parts. And what we're going to do is basically inverse the selection. So remember how we inverse the color earlier in the mask from black to white and from white to black. I'm going to do that with the mask. So as you can see, if I would be changing my color to black now to make stuff invisible, I could only paint within my selection. But by pressing Control or Command, Shift and I on the keyboard, the selection is now inverse. So now we can basically paint around her while removing the edges here without any consequences but do however make sure that you're not painting around her like this because otherwise you do have to make a whole selection around her so only paint where you want to remove those extra parts like this and actually seeing another part here that should be added So now that we have all of our selections done, and I hopefully you learned something about selecting, uh, let's just go and uh, make the composition real quick. And just to finish things up and make it look extra perfect, what I'm going to do is make the model transparent for a little bit. And I'm going to draw with my pen tool around the edge of the crater of the volcano here so that it actually looks like she's emerging from the volcano. So I'm going to make a selection and just paint with a black brush around her like this. And I'm going to press Ctrl or Command D to remove the selection. And I'm going to up the opacity, and now it looks like she's kind of emerging from the volcano. Alright, so now I'm going to rename my layers real quick. Alright, so now the final step is actually making this look a little bit like we actually printed this out and used a knife to, you know, make the collages, cut it out of the real piece of paper and stuff. Um, so the way we're going to do that is basically by using textures. And basically these are just scanned in or photographed textures of any material, in our case paper, which we're going to place over all of the subjects in this collage. So you can obviously get some textures uh, for free online, such as uh, on Texture Fabric, um, but I'm going to use my own texture pack. It's available on my web store for 5 euros. Uh, of course you don't have to get it, but by purchasing this texture pack you basically support me and my channel, making me be able to keep the weekly videos. So, in the Dreadlabs paper pack we have over 60 textures they're all from black pieces of paper i also have another texture pack basically that comes with a lot of vintage paper textures as well as cardboard and sandpaper textures uh, so if you want to get them there's a link down in the description uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to just drag one of these in randomly and we're going to talk about blend modes 
basically blend modes make you able to either show a lighter or a darker part or certain colors out of your uh, layer and blend them in with layers below that layer i have a whole video on texturing by the way so if you want to learn more about how textures work and how to layer them properly uh, check out the video down in the description uh, for now all you need to know is if you want to show the darker parts of a texture use the blend mode multiply and if you want to show the lighter parts of the texture use the blend mode screen so let me just show you those so the multiply basically makes the image also darker and the other one screen makes the image lighter and that's kind of what we're going for here because the image of our texture is kind of dark because it's black paper we want to show the lighter parts show that texture and the dust and speckles that are on the paper texture so I'm going to change the blend mode to screen and I'm going to do that for all of our images here I'm going to hold alt or option to duplicate them and basically I want to have this shown only where the sun is so I'm going to use a clipping mask and you can do that by going to right click create clipping mask and now this paper texture is only visible on the sun here uh, and also to give it some extra depth what I'm going to do is click on ctrl T or command T if you're on a Mac and basically change this texture up a little bit make it a little bit smaller perhaps rotating it a little bit and that's just because in real life of course all of these aren't like cut out from the same piece of paper uh, so this gives it a little bit more depth if that makes sense so i'm going to do that a couple of times more All right, so now that we've done this, you might notice that the uh, colors are really washed out right now. And that's because, of course, every image gets lighter because of this blend mode. And we can fix that a little bit by actually changing the dark and light values out of our textures. So let's take the one with the volcano, for example, because that's the most obvious one in my opinion. What I'm gonna do is select the texture and click Control or Command M on my keyboard. And this brings up the curves menu. And all you need to know about the curves menu is if you drag in this slider to the right, the image gets darker. And if you drag this slider to the left, the image gets lighter. And in this case, we kind of want to have a darker uh, texture. So I'm going to slide in this one a little bit more. Basically, this makes the uh, effect less drastic. In the background, I'm actually going to make this darker as well. But also increase the contrast a little bit. And you can do these separately for each one because of course they don't need to be made out of the same piece of paper. Gonna make it really light with the sun because that's very saturated compared to the rest of the images. And if you just wanna copy the same uh, curves preset to another one, what you can do is go to this filter here and if you cannot see this, this is because this is a smart object. And basically your layer should be a smart object if you just drag it out of your folder like I did. Uh, if this is not the case, what you can do is right click here, click on convert to smart object, and then use the curves adjustment layer, and then you will be able to see this icon. And now you can just easily hold alt or option on your keyboard, drag the two circles on top of the other texture where you wanna have the curves adjustment, and voila. In my case, I'm just going to edit a little bit more. All right, let me just collapse all of these curves adjustments to make it a little bit more easier to see. All right, so we're pretty much finished. Uh, what you still can do if you are interested in doing it is doing some color correction on the photos itself or uh, maybe some brightness and contrast. For example, what I'm going to do is change the U on the background here by pressing Command or Control U on the keyboard. And I'm going to change the U a little bit to the right to make the sky look a little bit more orange so that it's more in line with the lava and the sun here. And the last thing I'm gonna do is add a subtle drop shadow to each part of the collage here. If you would be taking a picture of a collage in real life, there would also be a little bit of shadow underneath each piece of paper. So I'm gonna do exactly that by clicking on this FX button here and click on drop shadow. And I'm just gonna click on reset to default so you guys can follow along with, what I, uh, with my settings. I'm gonna change the angle to around 120. And I'm going to make the distance a little bit more drastic. And lower the opacity just a little bit. So something like this should be fine. And again, you can also duplicate this effect by holding Alt or Option on the keyboard and dragging that over to all of the pieces of paper that you have in the collage. Like that. So as you can see, this creates a little bit of extra depth in between each image. Uh, you can make this as drastic as you'd like. 
Uh, for me, I uh, really just like this because it looks a little bit more realistic in my opinion. So there you have it. Uh, basically, if you want to learn a little bit more about collages and you feel like you're ready to take on a more advanced tutorial, you can check out the previous video that I put out. I think it's over a year ago now. I think I still didn't have background music on my videos back then. Uh, anyways, like I said, if you want to get the project files for this tutorial, you can actually become a patron of mine. By becoming a patron, you won't only get access to all of my project files, but you also get a 15% discount in my asset web store, where you can get the paper texture pack, as well as an exclusive Discord role on the Red Labs Discord server. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive videos and tutorials, including a full series on how to start a clothing brand, and a full-on guide how to make death metal logos from scratch. And more videos are coming. So if you want to become a patron, there's a link down in the description. Thank you so much for the support so far because this really helps me keep the channel up and running and making me be able to keep the weekly videos up for you guys. If you do not have the budget to support me, that's completely fine. A like, a comment and a subscribe help me out enough already. So thank you so much for watching. This was Tom from Red Labs tuning out and I'll see you guys in the next video.